Welcome to Flashback Friday, where we are flashing back to Sundance of this year, 2021. You're going to hear our friend John Wildman from Films Gone Wild talking to director Lucy Walker about her film Bring Your Own Brigade. Super timely right now. This film focuses on the California wildfires in Paradise in Malibu, California in 2018 and does a big deep dive into how these fires happened and what the residents could or did not do uh, to prepare for the next fires because, hey, y'all, we're in fire season um, right now and it's 2021. So please enjoy this interview with Lucy Walker and us and John Wildman. And you can find Bring Your Own Brigade streaming now on CBSN and Paramount+. Plus. Thanks for listening. Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com where you can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind the scenes videos and two minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find us every other Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. at bff.fm. And if you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the love of God, do it. It really helps. We are on filmsgonewild.com and Bitch Talk. I'm John Wildman. I'm here with my co-hosts, Aaron Lim and Angela Tabora. And we are virtually here at Sundance 2021 and talking to Lucy Walker about Bring Your Own Brigade, uh, the documentary. And, uh, and, and Lucy, uh, we're going to have you um, introduce your film to the folks who have not seen it as yet before we dive into this and before we go into our reminiscing of, I think, 20 film festivals I've had uh, that you have been present at over the past decade. So That's right. tell us about Bring Your Own Brigade. Bring Your Own Brigade is a new feature documentary and it's about um, fire. It's about these terrible mega fires that we are having and uh, about the human beings that are caught up in them and the stories and wanting to get to the bottom of what firefighters are going through, what residents are going through and um, what's going on. Basically, what is going on? Mega fires, WTF. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And by the way, let's solve them. Can we? Are right. we okay? Are we going to burn? Because I don't want to. So well, I think you know, I, I think I think Erin is going to lead off here. I believe. Um, but but I just wanted to before she uh, started in, as <laughs> as we start grilling you about the film, I do want to say initially that the three of us. Um, you know, last year we had on Ron Howard with his film about paradise and, and it's a tough film to watch and what have you. And, but I have to say your film, um, I was putting it this way. I debate on Facebook a lot and I, and I'm someone that's always looking up research and I'm always like going for, and posting background and backup or whatever. And your film hits this from every goddamn angle you can think of. And that we didn't even think of to your immense credit I mean, it is devastating to watch. And, and, and the film, every different turn that you take, I'm going, holy shit, I didn't even think about that part of it. Jesus Christ. And there's that too. Um, so, so we were overwhelmed uh, uh, by Bring Your Own Brigade. And, and now, now that I've hyped this to the extreme, I'll hand it off to Aaron. <laughs> oh, Jesus, John. I thought there was a question there. Um, <laughs> yeah, there, there are a lot of stories within this, uh, within this umbrella. Um, I, I, I will say fuck Kim Kardashian forever. Thank you for reinforcing <laughs> my feeling about her and her family. And, um, but to that storyline, you talk about them hiring a private firefighting brigade. And also, um, c can you talk about uh, more of that? And if if you found that the wealth gap between those fires down in, in Southern California and up in Northern California, I mean, there's a lot to unpack there. So I wanted I wanted to see if you could talk more about that. There is, I'm just realizing which mic am I on? Oh no, I think maybe I just meant to check on a good mic. Um, just panicking about the mic, um, but 
should I not panic about it? If you can hear me, that's fine. I do have a okay, good we're all good. Hit. We're all okay, good. good. I may get closer to my good mic. Um, so, um, you know, when you're in hell, you're in hell. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. And I think these people caught up in the fires and the firefighters, I think we're all really bonded. And I wanted to make the film that really includes everyone. Uh, one of the things I loved about the film actually was I got out of my own bubble. You know, I've lived in, um, you know, these urban cosmopolitan, uh, you know, kind of Democrat leaning progressive kind of places. And um, I really loved visiting these more rural areas and meeting more people that, um, you know, uh, just uh, think differently than I do about things. And I think the film is, is about how we're gonna come together, not to have our Biden unity moment, but I think it is a Biden unity moment. I think that the film is about how we're not gonna solve this on our own. And I think speaking as someone who immigrated from England to California on my own, and as many of our you know ancestors did, your ancestors did, I personally immigrated myself. Um, but I think that now it's sort of about like, oh my gosh, this problem is so huge. We're gonna have to like come together. And um, I don't even blame uh, Kim for the f private firefighters. I'm sure her insurance company made her do it actually. Um, hmm. And um, because this is the pickle that we're all in. And um, so, uh, and there are, it is a complicated story and, and thank you for saying uh, there are all these different angles. There just are, and actually there, it, there's a lot of, it was a lot to research, but I really wanted there to be a place where people could look at the whole problem because it is kind of a holistic 360 thing that we're in that's causing these, that's causing this problem. I think if fire was a simpler problem, we'd have solved it. And there's a reason it, we haven't solved it. And we're having these bigger and bigger, bigger fires, 2020 being the worst year ever. And um, unfortunately, we're absolutely sad to con continue that. And it's not just climate change. I did go in with this right. assumption that it was climate change, which would uh, make sense, right? We've had the hottest temperatures and the biggest fires. And I thought, well, that's it. That's, that's the correlation you need and I'm going to make a film about climate change in my own backyard and um and I kind of did in a much bigger way than I ever planned it um but it isn't just climate change that's causing these fires and that was a real revelation to me so I wanted to share that with the audience that you know, all these experts, what I was learning was that it's not just climate change, climate change is the performance enhancer it's making it worse, but these places would burn whether or not we had climate change. They, they burn well before we had climate change and they're gonna keep burning. The first European that showed up um, to, the, to, the, to California, um, uh, he landed uh, and, and it was what is now Los Angeles and it was covered in smoke. And he called this area that's now Los Angeles, the Bahia de los Fumos, the Bay of Smoke, because it was all on fire. And that was when the first European showed up. And so um, it's, it's been on fire forever and it's gonna keep being on fire. And um, the question is, um, you know, are the fires getting worse? Why are they getting worse? Why are we building homes in the middle of it that, mm -hmm. that aren't fire resilient and then not, not setting residents um, up and then putting these poor firefighters in harm's way and expecting them to be able to solve these fires that actually aren't solvable, you know, and that we don't understand that. And, and you really see that play out in the film. You see people not understanding why the firefighters can't save their homes because they can't. These fires are too big and the winds are too strong and this fuel has piled up too much. Um, and um, it's not a firefighting problem. You know, so uh, going in and finding out what kind of a problem it is and learning the stuff that we can do, which is great news, right? As somebody <laughs> says in the movie, like, thank goodness it's not just climate change, because if there was, that'd be much harder to solve, because climate change is going to take us a little while to solve, right? Uh, hopefully. And so this is um, actually really good news, the stuff we can do. But then you start to get into, well, why aren't we doing it? And it got really interesting uh, to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, right? exactly. That was infuriating, uh, among other things. And I, I really think that Bring Your Own Brigade could be the title of the making of this documentary as well, because the sheer knowledge and research and people that you had to bring, experts and such that you had to bring, is just insane. So thank you for, 
I, the crazy amount of work that you put into this. I but keep at- noticing that it really, really was. It was a crazy amount of work. I, I, I had to be a little bit obsessed or I would have just, there were so many times when I thought like, can we start now? Like, <laughs> say that that's like, you don't need to know the rest of it, you know, but you do, you kind of I really wanted personally to understand the whole story. And I feel like that's what documentaries do, right? Documentaries are the best medium, I think, for understanding a complicated story like properly yep. and emotionally engaging it. So you feel like you've got friends in the situation that like you really trust emotionally the story and you really get a grip on it so that you can feel really, really informed and empowered um, like no other medium. Uh, if I read a magazine article, they can be incredible and more in depth and say more clever things than a film maybe, but they're not going to like put you there and, and make you kind of make you friends with the people in it. Right. In a way that you could um, see them on the street and just, they'd be like friends to you and you'd really know what their life is about, for example. And I just think film is the best medium for that. And that's why I persisted, yeah. Well, you know, I think um, one of the things amidst all this that, 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 that I really, really appreciated, but you just touched on a, a little bit ago, was the historical aspect of this. You know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the political historian, Heather Cox Richardson. And because she, you know, she lays out a lot of shit that we're going through um, politically, and then gives us the background, like, you know, how, how the misuse of socialism actually began during Reconstruction in the 1870s, because, you know, uh, you know, white people didn't want, you know, to, you know, to, you know, to, to um, let, you know, black people own things. And so they, they and so they, they said it was because of socialism. That's the problem, it's socialism. And today we're still dealing with that. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that you, you know, even with this, we're, of course, climate change, of course, we're talking about that, you know, and, and, and of course, we're talking about, um, you know, the, the electric company, and of course, we're talking about clear cutting, um, but you even take it even further to, you know, to, to, to literally showing us the dominoes through the years that have done this. So my question, and I actually do have a question this time, um, but <laughs> the, question, the question is, you know, that discovery process for you as the filmmaker, because it's one thing for you to drive up to, to, to you know, to, to the central coast of California and, you know, and up in that area and see the devastation and start digging as any documentarian, you know, would, but it's another thing for you to take it as far. So talk about your personal discovery process, which then led to the depth of this film. Mm, thank you. Well, I felt like, um, Oh, so interesting. I felt like sometimes the fire burns things away and lets you see a little bit farther. And literally, actually, in some of these areas, when the fire burns away, you see these layers of history in this fascinating way. You'll see old mine shafts or old logging equipment from 100 years ago that had been all covered up by the forest. And when the forest is uh, cleaned out, you see these layers of history. And um, there's even the, the, this road we were filming on called Ishi Lane. You're like, well, who's Ishi? Uh, and, uh, and Ishi was the last, quote, wild Indian. Um, and um, he, his whole family had been scalped. Um, and so he was hiding in the forest. And after a wildfire, I think it was about 1910, he was hungry after a fire. And so he ventured into um, a village of Konkau, which is some, where we filmed for food and was caught and was like a fully um, sort of uncontact, uncontacted person because he'd, um, his, he'd been very small when his family had been brutally murdered in front of him and he'd just hidden um, and uh, witnessed it and then been too scared to come out and ever again. And um, so, uh, this area that we're in of California, I guess I can't believe how close the history layers are to the surface and that me as a newcomer, maybe it's my um, kind of beginner's mind kind of goggles, you know, I'm a newcomer so I can ask these dumb questions like, well, what happened here? And, you know, coming as a Brit to California for my film career, you know, and loving the nature and, you know, I love, I love California. It's such a beautiful, fun, fresh 
outdoorsy lifestyle, but you've got the work, the creative work, but the fantastic, spectacular nature, right? And you think, well, this place is great, but like put the fires out, right? And, and so actually kind of unpicking my own kind of own journey and thinking, well, yeah, I have this kind of entitled feeling that I want to control nature and that I've come on my own and I'm going to get what I want. And that's my dream, you know, and then realizing like, oh gosh, I'm not the first European that did that. In fact, we've had these waves of booms with the, um, you know, Silicon Valley, whether it's music, Silicon Valley, um, uh, aerospace um, and the gold rush. And then also the timber boom, which I'd never thought of. Who's thought of the timber boom? Actually the, the houses um, right around the fire that we take a really close look at in paradise, actually the, the trees there, um, they say built San Francisco. Um, mm -hmm. And so, because with lumber, you don't take it very far. It's really big to move around. So if you want to build a bunch of houses like they did in San Francisco at one time when they were just putting up San Francisco, um, they took the fire from right there in the Sierra Nevada foothills. And um, so they took the, 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 the logs, um, the, the lumber, the timber. And um, so you kind of see these layers of history and you start to see this big story about the landscape and you start to understand why, um, as one of our characters puts it, why was mother nature pissed? You know, <laughs> what exactly is going, has gone on in this landscape that isn't what it used to be? because these fires are bigger, they're on a scale we've never seen before and they're killing so many people and so many animals and, and, and burning such a huge acreage um, and burning so much hotter than before. So even um, really fire adapted species, these iconic California species, like the giant sequoia, which I yeah. revere. I looked at those pictures and picture books of a car driving through a tree, not probably very good for the tree in retrospect, but really exciting to see as a <laughs> girl growing up in England with like wonderful trees, but not that tall or old, right? Mm -hmm. You look at these trees and you know that this like California is this like epic, you know, scale. And um, to understand that these incredible creatures, the oldest, biggest creatures on the planet amongst them, you know, um, and their seed pods, you know, uh, don't open until the fire comes through right. and, and the heat melts it, right? And, and the seeds come out. Um, uh, so they're they literally adapted for fire, right? They don't even reproduce until there's a fire um, and they're getting burned because the fires now are too hot. You're like, something is off. This isn't the normal um, way these forests used to burn. Something's really different happening here. And, um, and also learning, which was really crazy to me, that these fires happen all the time. And even actually in Paradise, which is one of the fires we really look at, last summer in 2020, another fire burned in that killed 16 people already. So just uh, less than two years later, um, 16 people were killed, again, in a really horrible way when a fire just came through really quickly. Um, and so I think we've got to look at that and more and more people are pouring into these areas because we're all looking for houses, right? And um, so we're kind of, um, you know, really, a lot of us are really in horrible danger. And so uh, the more I knew about that and the more I talk to these people who've lost their houses it's devastating you know and um and it's not just people that die in the fires i mean the stress of what people go through uh, i just actually had a terrible um sad shock i've been trying to find people to invite them to the premiere and actually one of them is in hospital due to injuries sustained in the fire still oh. and um i thought she was doing okay and she's uh she's the mayor of malibu's wife she's back in the hospital and um, another of our characters has died, has passed away. Um, and he was this very traumatized um, young mm -hmm. man who says that he'd seen the um, people being burned to death and he looks very visibly traumatized. And sure enough, um, he um, has just died. And uh, mm. doubt the trauma was really that precipitating factor, I would say. And so you've realized that the toll it's taken, it's not just that death toll, which was bad enough in paradise, it was 85 people on that one day in the most um, sort of frightening kind of a death as well. Not, not the kind of death that you can say, oh gosh, well, that was a nice peaceful way to go, you know? Um, really um, difficult stuff. And, um, but it's not just that, it's the um, real, it can have some really difficult impacts um, on um, 
people's lives and a lot of people homeless and really hurting um, uh, or even dying after the fact. And so I felt really moved by this and really determined to try to um, understand it. And the firefighters, I think, were really helpful as well because they know that the public doesn't really get it and sometimes and they really want public the public to understand it better so that they can be better allies to themselves and um uh and also just yeah be safer and so um the firefighters were really amazing uh about everything by the way and they are also good looking but that's not unbelievable people just they're unbelievable people right they just are the best people they just want to help and they're so smart and so good and they're i always work with them like will you teach me how to like think like a firefighter because they're just so good at um thinking in crises and you see in the film as well some of the incredible acts of like above and beyond what they're trained to do or what you could expect a human being to do and how they really saved hundreds of people by individual acts of just courage and thinking kind of calmly and creatively actually in really, really um, crazy uh, corners to save themselves and just whole bunches of people around them. And um, so it was incredible, but they're really also, they let me in, they let me in the truck with them in the, during fires and they let, uh, they really let us in, in that way that I think makes great documentaries. Cause the audience doesn't want the polite version. You know, you're sitting there, you don't want to hear everything's fine, you know, cause it's not true and it's not helpful and it's not interesting either. Um, you want to get really, you know, what's happening. And so only I feel like some people have that gift of really opening up. And those are the people that as a filmmaker you want to find. And because you know, those are the people that the audience is going to really, um, that feeling of like really getting to know what they're going through. That's so uniquely the gift of documentaries, I think. And um, the firefighters really let me in. So I think you feel you really get their perspective as well. And they really need people to understand what's going on. So I, people really wanted to share and the residents as well, just let me, you know, in. And um, we have one particularly amazing story that I don't want to spoil it, but it kind of just like, if you wanted a story that kind of exemplifies kind of how human beings like can not just defy death, but also kind of um, embody life, you know, and, and the amazing ability of life to um, renew and move forward. Mm. Um, I think that, that, that there's one story that like writes a beautiful arc for me. And I felt very, um, used a real arc of life and death that was incredible to witness actually. I'm glad you mentioned that at the end because, you know, unfortunately we are, you know, out, out of time. And again, to your credit, you know, we could frankly do an hour version yes. of our show. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and um, uh, cause I know also, I, I believe, uh, Angela, is, it, is your brother-in-law is a firefighter? Yeah, yeah, he is in LA, LA County, yeah. Oh, there you go, yeah, and I, they're amazing, and I can't handle firefighters being criticized. I'm sure we're all fallible, et cetera, right? But, um, but the, the firefighters are really, um, when it all gets too tough for regular people, like we call firefighters, right? And um, they, they're there and they'll take care of everything that's just like too advanced for normal human beings to handle. And um, like they, they, they're kind of, um, they are real heroes. But I also um, wanna make sure that we don't just hero worship them, that we right. also actually like show up and do the work that means that yes. they can do their jobs mm -hmm. and stay safe. Um, and understand also what they're going through and don't expect them to be superheroes because no one's wearing a cape. You know, they are actual human beings and um, no, we're not in the comic books here. So I think that's sort of also what I wanted to really be clear about. Well, and, and again, and, and I also want to be clear for anybody watching uh, this interview because I don't want to lead anybody astray thinking that this is 
um, you know, a dry broccoli movie kind of approach to this um, because you really do get into the humanity and, and, you know, and whether it's, it's those firefighters or whether it's, you know, the, the tragedy of the people that again goes to the incredible frustration on their yeah. short term memory, yes. uh, you know, as far as what they need to do to protect themselves afterwards. So there, there's a tremendous human element to this as well as all the factors. Um, again, the film is Bring Your Own Brigade and we've been talking to Lucy Walker. Uh, Lucy, it, of course, it's always wonderful to talk movies with you. Um, and thank you for being on the show. Yay, thank you. I'm so excited to chat to all of you. So really, thank you so much. If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about us, you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com. This podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show's edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions. <laughs>